Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this, uh, uh, to this uh, session. Uh, we're nearing the end of the conference. Uh, it's been great two days here in Barcelona with uh, many great, great uh, talks, many great speakers. Um, uh, I'd like to welcome you to this talk uh, uh, titled From Zero to Open Source Hero, Contributing to Spring Projects. So um, at the beginning, a uh, few questions for you in the audience. Are there any uh, Spring con contributors in the audience? Any, anyone contributed to any open source pro project? You did? OK, cool, guys. Java based or something else? Java? Maybe Java. OK, cool. Uh, anyone else uh, interested, perhaps, in becoming contributor? Yeah? OK. Hopefully, this talk will give you some insight into the uh, journey of a uh, contributor. Uh, so to start, uh, here is the agenda of the talk. Uh, in, in the start, I'm going to briefly introduce myself. Uh, after that, we'll, we're going to dis discuss the, like the notion of contribution, uh, what it actually means to contribute, why should you do it, and uh, where to start your contributing journey. Uh, after that, we're going to discuss the topics of uh, like uh, fork management, which is the base of uh, all the contributions, or most contributions. Uh, we'll discuss what actually does it uh, make a good pull request, and the uh, uh, life cycle of a pull request. Uh, in the end, we're going to do a brief uh, recap and the usual Q&A session. Okay, so about myself, uh, my name is Vedran Pavic, I'm Croatian, uh, uh, and I work as a software development engineer uh, at Caps Carrier Home. It is an Austrian company. Uh, I work at a, a Croatian subsidiary located in Zagreb. We mostly do um, uh, telco industry, so we develop, develop solutions for a uh, number portability domain and most, most, more recently uh, identity management solutions. So if uh, some of you work in similar domains, it would be, easy. It would be nice to uh, chat and like, share experiences. Uh, other than that, uh, I consider myself to be an open source software enthusiast. Java, Spring, Linux, those are the technologies I like and use on daily basis. Um, I've been a Spring user for about uh, eight years now, and um, for the uh, past year and a half, I've become quite active in the uh, Spring community, contributing to multiple Spring projects, most notably Spring Boot and Spring Session. Other than that, I, I've also contributed to other Spring projects, but also non-Spring project uh, related to their integration to, to, to Spring. Uh, and for the last six months, I've been a member of Spring Session team as a committer. It's a project led by uh, Rob Lynch, which is also a lead of Spring Security. Uh, so actually, this journey of uh, being becoming a contributor and uh, becoming a committer was the motivation for putting this talk together and uh, eventually and hopefully motivating more people to join the, the community. OK, uh, what it actually means to contribute? Uh, we all have some ideas about it. Uh, I, I'd say that uh, mostly when you say contribution, people think about the code. But actually, uh, th there is more, more to contribute than just code. Uh, you could be, for example, sharing your uh, Spring knowledge and experience with other users on like issue trackers, Stack Overflow, uh, chat rooms like Gitter and the like to, to help other users re resolve their problems. By, by doing this, you not only help the users themselves, you also help the project's maintainers by, by uh, like, uh, putting so, some of the maintenance burden of their back, which is really a nice thing to do. Other than that, uh, you could also be contribute to the project by raising issues. This is also important to, to maintain the high quality of the of, of project. And uh, one thing on uh, reporting issues, uh, which is, like, I consider it important to, to, to stress, is the importance of uh, providing uh, maintainers with a reliable way to uh, like re reproduce your problem. It's, uh, oftentimes we see that people 
uh, open issues and uh, post like, I don't know, screenshots from their debugging sessions in the IDE. This, this won't help the maintainers uh, solve your problems quickly. You, you gotta think as a developer to developer. We are developers who are reporting the issues, the maintainers are developers, so we are most efficient with the code. So uh, the, the most uh, efficient way uh, to ensure that your uh, issues uh, will be looked at and resolved is to uh, provide like uh, unit tests to reproduce the problems or in more complex scenarios uh, provide a minimum complete verifiable example of the issue you're facing. Um, uh, there's, a, there's a link on the slide uh, to Stack Overflow help page on MCV that's a minimum complete verifiable example. If, you, if you, you're not familiar with it, it uh, it's a nice article to, to keep in mind uh, when writing issues. And of course, finally, uh, documentation uh, is often, I'd say, uh, underappreciated under -appreciate, under part of a project, but uh, very important, and you can make su substantial uh, contributions to a project by uh, improving document documentation. Okay, so uh, what are the prerequisites of contribution? Uh, well, um, since most, um, basically all uh, Spring projects have been uh, on GitHub, uh, for some time now, uh, the knowledge of Git, obviously, uh, together with uh, the workflows related to Git, uh, as well as the GitHub itself, is an important part of the, of the story. Other than that, um, uh, it's important to realize that uh, contributing is about collaboration. So there are no, uh, uh, like, one and done uh, deals. Uh, you, you need to be willing to discuss uh, explain, elaborate your problems or your propo proposals you're making and, and rework them eventually. It, uh, it's a process. Okay, so, so keep that in mind. Um, also, yeah. one of the uh, prerequisites is uh, so-called CLA, which stands for Contributor License Agreement. Basically, it's legal stuff, but it's required for more substantial contributions to, to uh, Spring projects, um, as well as other open source projects. Uh, not, not to go into much details, uh, basically it's an agreement between, between you as a contributor and uh, uh, a spring on, uh, on the terms that you are granting them permission to use your code, which is like intellectual property. Uh, not to go into much details, uh, this uh, cla.pivotal.io has all the details, so uh, head over there and uh, check out. Uh, and the final, they say that patient, patience is of virtue, so uh, that applies to contributing to open source as well. Okay, so why would you contribute? Uh, anyone have an idea? To make software better. Of course, of course. Okay, so motivations could be like fixing a bug, uh, proposing a new feature, uh, or simply giving back to the community. Uh, okay, uh, it's, it's uh, really important for people to realize that, uh, that Spring and the entire Spring community really, really embraces your contribution, contributions. And uh, the Spring has always been quite an open community, but the major turning point and the, 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 uh, the thing that really kick-started the contributions was the move uh, of uh, Spring projects to, to GitHub. Uh, GitHub is like we all know about it. It's the most popular social co coding platform for collaboration, and it, uh, as such, it's a, it, it is a natural fit for Spring. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, all Spring projects have moved to GitHub by 2012, so that makes it uh, over five years now. And uh, over that time, you could really see the, the, the trend in, in increased numbers of contributions to across the Spring ecosystem. Um, from myself personally, uh, uh, I was al always looking, you know, to become a contributor. And uh, one person who uh, encouraged me the most was actually uh, Sam Brennan. I believe some of you know him. He's a Spring core committer, uh, author of Test uh, Framework. Um, and uh, I was lucky uh, to meet Sam uh, two and a half years ago in Prague, or was it three years ago, something like that. Uh, basically, my colleague and I, we took um, enterprise integration with Spring course, and uh, Sam was our lecturer. So uh, we were like, 
of who we, uh, we get to know uh, Spring committer uh, and, and, uh, and member of Spring community. So we were like uh, asking all the questions about the feature that we found missing in the Spring. So each time we asked these questions, Sam was like, okay, sorry, we don't have that at the, at the moment, but hey, maybe you can do a pull request, contribute back. So each and every day, it was like the same answer for Sam. So uh, that was the moment that I actually realized that, that the Spring guys really, really, really value contributions, not only by, by using the tools and the platforms that, that encourage it, but, but having the like the, the the right approach and and uh, by by with that, that then their actions they in, in encourage uh, the con community to contribute other thing to uh, to um, have in mind is also that uh, spring projects are extremely well managed uh, and with uh, by that i mean that uh, have have contributors in mind so once you check out the source of a spring project it's extremely uh, easy to import it into your ide and make it to build. So there are no like 10 step cookbooks of building a project. It's all that simple. And, and, and it really uh, lowers the, the point of entry for newcomers, which is important for contributions. Uh, and the final thing uh, I'd like to point out that uh, Spring, Spring guys really do a great job of uh, rewarding uh, contributions by, uh, by uh, making sure that uh, contributors are properly uh, attributed by commits and uh, author tags in Javadoc. Uh, it's, it's all rewarding and it enc encourages the contributors to keep on contributing. Uh, okay. So to back up these claims, uh, here's the screenshot from the Spring Boot, um, uh, Spring Boot uh, uh, GitHub uh, repository. I'd like to point out two numbers. Uh, these are fairly, uh, fairly recent uh, numbers from I think last week. So I'd like to point out that there are uh, over 11,000 forks of the Spring Boot project. Spring Boot project. And uh, uh, perhaps more impressive, there have been uh, 340 contributors to the Spring Boot code base. Uh, since uh, Spring Boot is fairly new project uh, in the spring, uh, uh, around four years old, old and, uh, it's, it, and especially since it, 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 it became quite a central piece to the entire Spring, spring eco eco ecosystem these days. Uh, this is impressive. So uh, if you, if you uh, from this number, if you uh, take into uh, consideration that maybe, I don't know, uh, multiple pivotal uh, uh, employees con contributed uh, from not only uh, the core Spring Boot members, but also uh, the members of other Spring projects, I'd account that for 20 contributors, but that leaves uh, 320 uh, 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 persons from uh, from community like like I am, like you are, uh, uh, that have contributed their code to the Spring Boot code base. I, I find that very impressive, and I think that this backs up uh, the, the the claim that uh, Spring really embraces your contributions. Okay, uh, so. Uh, what do you get out of, uh, you know, being the con contributor? Uh, well, uh, it's an opportunity to, you know, for one thing, uh, meet the Spring uh, guys and uh, like collaborate with them. You'll, you'll find that they are extremely friendly and knowledgeable gr group that, that are that is willing to, to share that knowledge, and you can use that experience to learn the new skills or in improve exi existing ones, since. Um, Spring projects are, in my opinion, very, very well managed. You can also uh, uh, take much out of them and apply this, this, uh, all these best practices to your projects. And so, by that, by doing that, you, you're uh, improving uh, the projects you work on a daily basis. Uh, contribution is also um, a nice way to grow your reputation. For example. Uh, uh, Everything you do is basically in, in public domain. Uh, everything, everyone sees, sees your work. It's like a uh, uh, new thing to put to your CV. Every, every, everybody can see what you have, have worked on and uh, what amount uh, uh, of contributions have you done. So it can, it can, it can help you with your career. And 
of course, uh, being part of something big and great like Spring, and which is widely used, is really cool and empowering experience in my, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Okay, so where to start with your contributions? Um, I'd recommend to use Spring.io, which is a Spring web website, as sort of uh, service discovery. Uh, basically, it's the same place you'd look for uh, a reference or API uh, documentation. Uh, Spring.io slash projects, then pick the appropriate project. You'll, you'll find uh, like pointers to all the relevant resources that you need to start contributing. Uh, you can see, for example, this screenshot. Uh, you probably all know from the project page this table with uh, active versions, uh, to, uh, I mean releases of the uh, given spring, spring projects together with links uh, to reference an API, but just below that uh, there's, there's a, a collection of links that point you to the relevant resources for, for that project. That can be uh, like stuff like issue tracker, uh, source repository, which is obviously GitLab, GitHub. I issue tracker can be either Jira or, or GitHub issues depending on the project. You, you'll also find links to uh, relevant Stack Overflow tags and uh, continuous integration server, which is used to, to run the builds for the given project. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, once you uh, check out the project, you'll, you'll also, also find uh, uh, some relevant information for contributors in there. For, for These are fairly standard locations uh, and well known for uh, uh, across the open source community, it's the, of course, README uh, document, contributing document, and code of conduct. All of these are uh, uh, basically essential for contributors to get familiar with because each uh, sp uh, Spring project could have uh, slightly different preferences uh, with regard to contributions. Uh, also, it, it is a nice thing to, to pay attention to uh, projects are active branches, it, uh, like a step of getting familiar yourself with a, a given Spring project. Uh, also, if you are uh, just uh, on the outside looking for a way to, to start from t contributing, uh, the, the most pr Spring projects uh, uh, declare some of the existing issues uh, as targeted towards community, uh, meaning like they are marked for uh, uh, community to take, o uh, to take them over. Uh, so you can check out the Jira or uh, GitHub uh, or GitHub issues. There should be a label appropriate uh, which, uh, which marks issue as uh, uh, targeted at contributors. So if you're uh, looking to get involved but don't know where, where to start, uh, issues marked for contribution could be a good start. Okay, so uh, next, next thing uh, uh, with regard to getting familiar to the projects, um, obviously the build. Uh, projects are, um, uh, all Spring projects use either Gradle or Maven builds and uh, they are, like I mentioned before, they are uh, managed with uh, contributors in mind. So the builds of the projects are extremely simple. It's uh, what uh, sometimes we refer to as single click builds. Uh, this means that uh, once you check it out, you only need a single command to build, to build the, the project. Uh, I find it, this very convenient and you know, like, uh, uh, easy for contributors to, to, uh, uh, to start uh, uh, getting familiar with the project. Also, uh, most of the projects uh, use Gradle or, or Maven wrappers, as can be seen from these sample commands. This means that basically on your system there are, other than Java, there are no other prerequisites. Wrappers will, will take, uh, uh, wrappers will uh, ensure that they down, download and install the appropriate version of build tool and you'll, you're all set. So uh, it's re re really that simple. Uh, uh, so, uh, other than that, of course, the before mentioned uh, README and contributor documentation and resources contains uh, more, more details on the project build. For example, uh, there could be simplified profiles for building, uh, I don't know, like, th th things like documentation or if you're just interested in building a, uh, uh, only 
only one module of a project or something like that, you should check it out, definitely. Okay, uh, so uh, getting also getting familiar with the project. Uh, uh, most sp uh, Spring projects uh, use um, uh, like uh, code style templates, uh, which are in some cases automatically checked uh, during the build phase. Uh, and so uh, check out the source repository for ID configurations of uh, code style, you'll need it when you start contributing because you want, want to make sure that your code is in line with, uh, uh, with style uh, prefer to, uh, preferred by uh, ma maintainers. Uh, also, it would be a good, good idea to pay, pay attention to Git work workflows that are used within the, within the given project. Uh, so for example, there are basically two options. Uh, some of the projects use uh, like uh, uh, let's, call it, let's call it merge workflow, for example, like Spring Boot, uh, they apply uh, any given change to the oldest supported uh, branch and they just merge it forward using no pass forward and then they basically uh, have a single commit for a, any given change which is then propagated to other branches. Uh, other strategy might be uh, just to do uh, rebase and uh, uh, cherry pick so you uh, uh, commit on a target bra branch and then the, uh, your change is uh, cherry picked to another branch. Uh, I think that actually mo mo more Spring proje projects use this rebase plus uh, cherry pick uh, workflow. Uh, one of the better ways to get familiar with the uh, with, uh, way to contribute is uh, to actually look uh, look at contributions from other people, either a successful one or unsuccessful one. It will uh, it will give you uh, like a preview of what is expected and what is not expected. So uh, it's basically all, all there on GitHub, so make use of it. Uh, if you're st still unsure, uh, you can always reach out to the, to the Spring guys, the maintainers of the project or to community. Uh, using the well-known channels like Gitter or Stack Overflow or whatever is available. Okay, so we move on to uh, managing your forks. Uh, for this first part, are there any questions maybe? No? Okay. Uh, so managing your forks. Uh, basically, uh, I believe you're all aware of how things work with, uh, with GitHub. Uh, Fork is what we call uh, basically a copy of repository that is under your user account. It is the, uh, once you fork the, the source repository, you get an exact uh, copy of a repository under your account. This, this uh, includes all the commits, all the branches, and uh, this is like a, a base on, base for all the contribution activities uh, to, to code base. Uh, here is the, for I believe more, more, most of you are familiar with the process, but he, here it is this described in two simple screenshots. When you, first one is taken from a Spring Project Spring Session repository. So when you fork it using this button, you'll get the, the, the project forked under your user account. This can be seen here. Uh, uh, first tip uh, from my side after you, um, after you, clone, after you fork the project, uh, pay attention to active branches and make your forks lean. Uh, by that I mean to, uh, since the forks is uh, the actual clone of the entire uh, source repository at the moment you forked it, this includes all the historical branches, of course. Most of them, or at least some of them, uh, won't be interested to you, so uh, since, uh, 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 in the long term, management of, of your fork will be easier if you just uh, delete the unwanted branches right on the start. So right after you fork it, be before you clone it locally, just delete the, the, the branches you don't need. Uh, this can be, this is demonstrated on the, on the screenshots. Uh, the, the delete part is chopped off here to the right, but uh, there is like recycle bin icon that can take care of deleting branches straight from the GitHub user interface. Okay, uh, so keep your forks up to date, meaning 
keep them synchronized. I mentioned that uh, when you fork a project, it's uh, exact copy at that moment when you uh, forked it. So uh, naturally, as, as uh, development of the original project moves on, your fork becomes uh, out of sync or it uh, misses some of the newer commits. Uh, so how you do that? Uh, GitHub offers a uh, substantial amount of documentation on that, but to, just to summarize, what you need to do is to add uh, another uh, remote to your, uh, to your uh, uh, project. Uh, basically, by default, you, and the, on project you use uh, daily basis in your company, you only have a single remote, which is so-called origin. Uh, when you uh, clone your fork, you'll also get origin, which points out to uh, project under your user account. So what you need to do is add another remote which will point to to the original uh, repository and by some convention they, uh, the name upstream is used for for, uh, uh, for, that, uh, for, for that remote. You can see here uh, basically in two commands how to add uh, an upstream remote and verify it using uh, the listing of remotes. So once you've added uh, upstream uh, uh, repository, uh, uh, synchronizing your, um, uh, your project uh, is si as simple as fetching from this new remote, which is called upstream. This is a shortened response from the Git, which in this example uh, shows us that uh, it has fetched uh, new commits on uh, two branches from upstream the master and uh, the 1.5 point X branch. So uh, this means that uh, all you need to do is like check out these branches, mer merge the, the changes from the upstream and just push them, push by default to your origin. So you mean you pull the changes from the upstream and push them to, uh, to, to your origin. And that's basically it as far as uh, keeping your uh, repo in, in sync with the, with the upstream. Uh, if for some reason you want to uh, keep your uh, tags in, in sync, you need to do that separately, but it's in similar fashion. Fetch tags from the upstream and push it to your origin. Okay, uh, another thing is uh, keeping your, uh, keeping your uh, fork clean of uh, old uh, branches. For example, you might be doing some work on some feature. Uh, your, uh, uh, your uh, branch might come to end of it, its li life cycle. Either uh, you have dropped it, uh, or uh, uh, your changes got merged after a pull request, or your pull, pull request was rejected, so you need, don't need those changes anymore. Um, uh, in that case, you can delete the, the, branch, the branches <coughs> described previously on the GitHub user interface, and uh, it, at that moment, you should clean up the references in your, in your local project by uh, executing this remote prune uh, command, which um, uh, will, del will then tell you which, uh, uh, which branches have been pruned, the ones that have previously been uh, uh, deleted on the remote. So uh, if you list the branches, you'll, you'll see the uh, the indication that it is gone on the on the origin. So after that, you can just delete the branch using standard git, git delete command. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, regarding uh, fork management, there is one more topic, and that is the addition of new branches. Naturally, as uh, as uh, development of projects goes on, new branches are introduced on the upstream. And you might be interested in picking up those uh, in order to uh, base your contributions of them or whatever. So uh, the easiest way to do that is basically to check out uh, with track option uh, uh, the given upstream branch. Uh, once you do that, uh, you have basically created a new local branch that is at the moment linked to the upstream. But uh, what you need to do uh, is to push to uh, your origin by uh, indicating uh, and changing the upstream to origin. You can do this like push set uh, upstream to origin and given branch. 
this pushes the, the newly pulled branch from the upstream to your origin. Okay, so now uh, any questions with regard to fork management? You're familiar with the process? Uh, okay, cool. Uh, so now, now we will discuss what does it make uh, a good pull request? What, what's the anatomy of a good pull request? Uh, before you start, um, it's actually a good practice to uh, check out whether the, the issue related to the change you are about to submit or already exists. So if it exists, drop a note that you're working on it to help prevent uh, like multiple people colliding on the, on the, same, uh, on the same topic and working <coughs> on the same uh, problem. Uh, otherwise, if the issue is not, not opened, uh, depending on the project, it might be needed to open the issues. For rule of thumb is generally the projects with, which manage issues on JIRA require uh, you to create a JIRA issue, and the projects which manage, which manage issues on uh, GitHub, basically you can do a pull request straight up because pull request itself can be uh, managed as an issue on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, important thing before we start is to pick the appropriate branch for your changes. So uh, with that in mind, uh, you should be aware of uh, like uh, the concept of semantic versioning, which is uh, a thing uh, string, uh, Spring is very, uh, uh, very in line with. Because uh, due to nature of your changes, uh, uh, you might need to target different branches. For example, if you're contributing a bug fix, uh, it is appropriate to, to target it at the oldest uh, active branch. Uh, if you are proposing a new feature, you should look at a branch which is currently in a pre-release candidate phase, like milestones, because once the project uh, reaches, once a release um, uh, reaches release candidate phase, it is generally <coughs> considered like feature complete. So uh, keep that in mind and of course, uh, Consult with uh, with the project maintainers. Uh, so when you work with your changes, uh, it uh, we've mentioned the, the code styles before. It is uh, it is advisable for you to uh, use the uh, uh, formatter settings that are usually provided within the project. Uh, those are basically in uh, Eclipse formatter configuration files. So if you're using Eclipse, it's straightforward for uh, either. For other uh, IDE users such as IntelliJ IDEA, uh, look for an uh, appropriate plugin to help you up with uh, setting up your uh, code formatter within your IDE. Uh, of course, uh, it's a good practice always to target your, to create a, a new feature branch for your changes. Before, uh, that way you make it easier both for you and for uh, the maintainers once you uh, uh, once you uh, pu push, uh, uh, I mean, create your uh, pull request. Uh, to create a feature branch, just branch from the target branch that you have previously uh, identified as a target for your changes. Uh, it's, it's also a good practice to make your changes a single commit, uh, unless there's a really good reason to do so, at, at least initially before the pull request is created. Okay. Um. Uh, this this uh, slide is titled test or it didn't happen and uh, it's really important to uh, to cover all the, the changes. If you touch the code, basically you need to uh, cover it with tests. If, uh, if you do like uh, bug fix, uh, provide a JUnit test uh, for the given change that, that reproduces the issue. If you introduce a new feature with your pull request, of course, a substantial amount of uh, tests is, ex is expected. Uh, usually, um, there can also be some other hints how to uh, document tests. Uh, check the do uh, co contributors' resources for that. For example, uh, some, maintain some maintainers prefer to, for you to uh, like uh, uh, refer to the issue in a comment of a test. So. Uh, to make it easier to link tests to the issue, uh, which was the, the source of the change. Uh, regarding the technologies for testing, it's the usual stuff in Java world, so JUnit, AsserJ, Mokito are most often used, as, as well as Spring test, con te test Context Framework. Okay. 
So it is also important to write good commit messages. Uh, I hope you find this funny, but not familiar, because uh, from my experience, uh, other than the tests, uh, Git uh, commit messages are the uh, other main point that uh, developers us usually slack at. Uh, why do I mention good commit mes messages? Because um, you're helping bo both uh, the maintainers and yourself. Uh, be aware that when you submit uh, a pull request, uh, the actual commit message of your uh, commit will be used uh, as a template for a pull request description. So, so if you uh, didn't write anything meaningful, meaningful in the commit message itself, you, you'd ha you'll have to do it uh, once you open pull request. So better do it early than later, all right? Also, uh, there are some uh, decent resources on the, on the web how to uh, write uh, good commit messages. Uh, here's one from ex-Spring member Chris Beams. Uh, I believe many of you are famous with this post. It goes in depth to describe the best practices on commit messages. Also check out, the, of course, the well-known contributor resources uh, within the code base of a project. Another good practice before you submit uh, the pull request is to actually build the project locally for yourself. Uh, uh, this ensures that um, uh, your uh, build will usually contain the checks for uh, like code style and perform all, all the tests. So uh, it is always a good practice to uh, run this locally and be notified of uh, any breaking changes you might introduce for example, uh, your change, you might have covered it with tests and that, that is all, all cool, but it might have impact on some other part of the project. That, that is why running build is, is important. Also, I mentioned uh, code style checks. Uh, I've noticed many people struggle with the, with the check style, but this can be easily prevented by simply importing the, the before mentioned uh, code style rules into your IDE and uh, use check style plugin for your ID. So uh, definitely build a project before you su submit the pull, pull request. Uh, okay, uh, now some of you might tell that uh, uh, building a project takes a long time, so uh, get creative with it. <laughs> uh, by the way, I really wonder what the Spring guys do when they do uh, like release builds, something similar to that. Or? Uh, okay, uh, so sometimes uh, building locally a project will fail uh, for uh, reasons that might not be related to, to your project. Uh, if that happens, uh, check the continuous integration server of the given project or uh, even read me document which might uh, contain an indicator of uh, build st status. Uh, if, if the project build is broken at the moment, it, so the build might not be failing due to your fault. Okay, so submitting the pull request. Uh, when you push your uh, feature branch onto the remote, uh, you'll uh, need to navigate to it over the Git user interface and uh, you'll find this new pull request button. Once you go there, uh, important uh, thing is to manually pick the uh, the, ta the branch you're targeting. And by, by default, it will be master, but if you are, uh, I don't know, contributing some sort of bug fix that is targeted at an older release, and by that I mean older branch, you should change it here. You can also see that uh, the source, uh, you can also verify here the source of your uh, proposal is the uh, exact feature branch. Okay, so uh, are there any questions to uh, anatomy of pull request, all clear? Okay, good. Uh, now to move on to a life cycle of a pull, pull request. So once you submit a pull request, uh, uh, this will usually trigger some actions on the GitHub, like some hooks will get executed, and two of the most common, common ones with Spring projects are uh, check for uh, contributor li license agreement, whether, whether you have signed it or not, or and, and a build of um, a pull, your pull request branch on the usually uh, Travis CI. Uh, this screenshot is taken from the uh, like pull request page. You scroll to the bottom, you'll, you'll find these checks. 
um, uh, maybe a few words about these checks. Uh, first time cr contributors will uh, need to uh, agree to uh, before mentioned CLA. This is uh, fairly easy these days because uh, oh, during the past, I don't know, year or so, uh, Spring Guys have in implemented uh, the, uh, the, system, the service that automates this. Uh, previously, you had to uh, declare that you agree to CLA to confirm by commenting on the pull request that you have signed the pull request. It, it was uh, tedious like for both sides. The, this, is, is, this is all automatic these days. Uh, the first time you contribute, you'll, you'll be directed to this CLA.pivotal.io and uh, all you need is to sign the CLA there and uh, you're set for future contributions. Uh, regarding the minor changes, uh, you can skip some of these hooks. For example, uh, uh, CLA might not be required for the simplest of the changes, like fixing a typo in the documentation or stuff like that. Uh, if that's the case, just add uh, this keyword obvious fix to the pull request description. So it will indicate uh, that uh, your change is not subject to uh, CLA. Other than that, uh, it, the simple use case, if you uh, contribute something really uh, trivial like uh, uh, spell fi fix uh, documentation uh, for uh, typos and stuff, uh, you can include this uh, CI skip between the uh, square brackets. This will indicate to Travis CI that uh, uh, PR branch build is not needed. So no, no need to run the entire build if you are just fixing a typo, right? Okay, uh, for some reason uh, it happens from time to time that uh, Travis CI gets stuck or fails for uh, not, no, not, not, not clear reasons. Uh, there may be some problems of transient nature. Uh, you might want to uh, uh, re-trigger the, the Travis CI build for your pull request branch. You can do this in two ways. Uh, the more, uh, I'd say, dumber way is to simply close your pull request and then reopen it again. But this way, the hooks will be reinitiated and the new builder will, will run. More elegantly, you can use it. Uh, you can use Git. Uh, you just need to amend your commit with no edits and push force it to the remote and uh, your existing uh, uh, checksum of the commit uh, will change, therefore triggering the hooks again and uh, initiated a new branch build. Okay, so uh, after you have submitted the pull requests, uh, of course expect discussions and uh, this especially applies to uh, new feature proposals. So uh, you'll be, oftentimes you'll be asked to, uh, to uh, like adapt your changes uh, to more uh, be in line with what maintainers expect. Uh, uh, when, you, when you face this, uh, uh, remember that it's all about collaboration and it's a process. So don't get frustrated, it, it, it's a normal thing. Uh, think, think of it from your side. If someone was about to contribute to your project, you, you'd also like to keep that contribution to some standard. Uh, uh, what you shouldn't do is basically just create a pull request and walk away. This is definitely a, you know, bad practice and bad communication. If you cannot find time to rework your pull request, uh, uh, state so on the, on the, on the GitHub and uh, it'll be, it, it, it is definitely useful, useful information for the maintainers. Um, uh, maybe somewhere, someone else from the community will pick up the, the work on your Post change and uh, finish your work. Okay, so updating your pull request after uh, after discussion and rework. Um, well, uh, uh, it is important to state at the beginning that uh, for nearly all all kinds of updates, there is no need to close the exist existing pull request. All changes, all the, all the changes ca can be done on the existing branch and the existing pull requests. Uh, so uh, the simplest way to uh, apply uh, the required changes to, uh, to your pull request is just to add individual commits to it. Uh, this, is, this is like simple, but it adds up uh, commits to a pull, pull request. You can, uh, you can uh, 
update your changes, but keeping a single commit using a, a trick similar to one uh, to reinitiate the Travis CI build. Basically, you add your changes to uh, uh, add your changes uh, and uh, just commit them, but uh, amend the existing. Com uh, oops, there's an error here, obviously. Uh, I think, ah, uh -huh, no, it's no edit, so no, no edit commit message, but uh, add the new changes. And then you need to push forward because, again, uh, uh, you have rewritten history and you need to uh, force the changes onto, onto the remote. So this way, your, your pull, re pull request will get updated, but it will still contain only a single, single commit. Okay, uh, so... Uh, 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 one more thing uh, regarding updating, uh, regarding the updating of uh, pull requests is to uh, to make your changes uh, on top of the current state of the target branch. Some oftentimes your your pull request uh, will uh, be processed after some time, and the, the development of the target branch will go on. So, like we said before, it will be become out of sync. Uh, GitHub is fairly intelligent to detect this, so you will be notified on the UI that there are some conflicting files on your pull request. So basically what you need to do is synchronize as explained above and uh, uh, just uh, rebase your, uh, your changes onto the current state of the target branch. Okay, in the end, uh, these are basically scenarios that can happen to you uh, uh, while uh, submitting a pull request, you didn't receive a response. Okay, uh, remember the patience thing. Uh, uh, Spring teams are really, really small, and uh, it might take some time for maintainers to reach your uh, proposal, depending on the phase of the project and, and everything. Just, just keep it in mind. And also, if your changes uh, aren't good, uh, someone will tell you. So your pull request certainly wouldn't be left open for a long time if uh, anyone uh, wasn't about to look at it eventually. So if, you, if you're, uh, obviously one outcome can be that your proposal wasn't accepted. Don't, uh, don't make this discourage you. Uh, for anyone who has contributed some substantial amount uh, of times to open source project has faced this situation once or many many, many times. So I, I can, I can uh, tell you that from first hand. It's, if you look at it, even, even uh, Spring uh, guys uh, that maintain one Spring project propose contribution to other Spring project and get it rejected, so it's, it's perfectly good. <laughs> and if your contribut contribution was accepted, so thumbs up, welcome to the club, and keep up the great work. OK, so in cl conclusion. Uh, Really, uh, Spring, Spring community uh, encourages and loves contributions, and uh, the point I'd like to make that Spring and the entire ecosystem around it, it really wouldn't be what it is uh, today without all the con contributions fro from the entire world and uh, the community and everyone like you are and me, and that, that is really a cool thing, that just join in. And uh, remember that, uh, as I stated before, the significant efforts have been made uh, with regard to projects, uh, with regard to management of Spring projects to make it uh, as easy as possible for contributors to, to get involved. And this, is, this is really important. And uh, I haven't, I've been contributing to open source, but I haven't seen anyone so dedicated to this like Spring is. Okay, uh, another point. Uh, uh, for you, those of you considering contributing, now it might be the right time to, con to actually do it because we are at a major turning point in the Spring ecosystem. Uh, recently, a uh, uh, feature complete release candidate of Spring uh, 5 was released and uh, uh, all other projects from the ecosystem are, are jumping onto the Spring 5 train and like uh, uh, making uh, Java 8 as a baseline uh, and up, uh, adopting the reactive programming model. So uh, Boot also two or three days ago released the first milestone of the 2.0 release. Uh, all the other projects across the ecosystem are in the milestone uh, phases. 
uh, it is really uh, now is the time to, to get to get on the contributor train and and and, and really uh, it, it is a chance across the spring projects now to make uh, things good and uh, and uh, uh, fix potential issues since we, uh, all, all the projects are moving to the new major release. Okay, Q and A. Any questions? Uh, did this encourage you to contribute? Perhaps it did. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is cool. They, that, that was the idea. So. Thanks. If you need any help with regard to contribute, uh, contributing to Spring, you can reach me out. This is my uh, Twitter handle and uh, GitHub account. I'd be glad to help if I can. Thanks.